Hi, my name is Gudrun from GE Designs, and I'm here at Fat Quarter Shop. And in this video, I'd like to show you how easy it is to make the Lucy quilt that's hanging right behind me. It looks quite complicated because it's got all those triangles, diamonds, and all kinds of trapezoids and angles. But believe me, it's really easy. So I have the pattern right here, and I'm going to be using the Stripology squared ruler for this quilt because it uses 10 inch squares. But you could just as well use the XL ruler for the same purpose. So first off, you have 10 inch squares. So I just chose to use this fabric here, which is all these different kinds of blues. So you want to pair up your 10 inch square of the color, a dark color or any kind of color. And then I use a single background for this project. You can use scrappy background as well. So first you just want to pair up the two that you want together in a block, which is only, you have to do that only if you have scrappy backgrounds. Obviously if you have one single background, you'll be pairing a background with every single color. So we start by cutting our 10 inch square into a large square a small rectangle and a larger rectangle. So now all we're gonna do is take the squares, we're gonna sew a light rectangle to the dark one and vice versa. And then we're gonna sew the light rectangle, long rectangle to the side and vice versa. We're going to be pressing these towards the darker fabric so that you will have opposite pressing on this. I always include pressing instructions in my patterns because it just makes things come together so much easier. So now I have here two units that are mirror image and they are pressed opposite, as you can see. So we can lay them on top of each other and those seams will nest perfectly. You can feel them kind of falling together. And so then we're gonna take a ruler and lay it on top of this block or this layered unit here. So you wanna make sure that you turn it the right way. I'm going to be using my ruler stickers because that just makes things so much easier and eliminates mistakes. What we wanna do is mark the exact slit that we're gonna line up with the two corners of the block. So we're gonna line up the two corners of the block on the six inch slit here. And I like to put my arrow here because it's so tempting sometimes because there's a white line, really thick white line that sometimes kind of screams at you. And so it's tempting to line that up, but we want to line it up on the slit. So now we're just going to make two cuts through that stack. So now we have these units in three pieces like this. So now all we're going to do here is swap the middle pieces and sew these guys back together like so. So when we sew them together, if when you're normally sewing things together that have these points and we have to overlap them to make sure we have our quarter inch, in this case, these are just going to be completely even here and you're just going to be butting up these two corners because once we sew them, there's supposed to be a space between the corners. So we sew these together and then of course the corner unit on so that, and then you sew these together. So now we have two blocks. One is a light block and then one is a dark block like this. And it will look really, really weird because it's, kind of uneven and um, some people start to panic, but don't panic. This is all good. This is all how it's supposed to be. So we are going to trim this to a perfect square. So in the pattern, I will show you exactly how to trim it uh, using the squared ruler. But of course you can use regular rulers for all of my patterns. I will give you instructions to do that as well. So I like to use my stickers again for squaring up. So this will be an eight inch block. So first I will take my one color stickers and outline that eight inch block. So you go up that left side of the ruler, find the black square, which is the eight inch. 
And then I put these red arrows or whatever color you want to use on the four corners. And so what this does too, the arrow is also pointing right at that diagonal line because we're going to be using those. Secondly, I take another color and I put them at the bottom of the slits of where I'm going to be cutting through. So on the zero and on the eight. Very helpful too, so we don't accidentally go into the wrong slit to cut because then that will ruin our block. But we want one more thing. So when we are aligning to square this block up, according to the instructions, you will have that diagonal line on the center seam. But another thing that will help us have these little triangles here the same size, which is very helpful when we put the whole quilt together, is that I put little arrow markings an inch and a half in from the corner. So here's my diagonal line. So I just count, here's a half inch, one inch, inch and a half. So that's exactly where I'm gonna put this arrow and on the other side as well. So we're gonna go half, inch and an inch and a half pointing out so what you want to do here so i have this lined up on the line but i want these arrows to be equal distance from that little tip of the triangle and you can see that here's a bigger gap than over here so that's why i'm going to slide this upwards just a little bit so that now i have even space here and here which means that in the end, these two little triangles are going to be the same size. So now I'm just gonna trim, cut through the zero, and then through the eight, where I put my green arrows. And as you can see, the ruler will just hold the block in place. And now we're just gonna turn it. This edge and this edge is now trimmed, so we lay the ruler back on. And all we have to do now is align the bottom black line along the bottom cut edge and then of course that diagonal line that the pink arrows are pointing at right there and you'll see that top eight inch line is also aligned with the edge already so making sure that all of this is lined up before we do our second cuts so it's a little sticky sometimes when your ruler comes straight out of the plastic and then we go through the zero and then the eight and we have a perfectly squared up block so the one dark square and light square that you started with will give you a dark block and a light block so when we start playing with this the pattern itself gives you four different layout options the quilt hanging behind me is actually layout four but we have three others that you can try and there's just a little bit of pressing difference when you want to between the layouts but i have some blocks so let's just play with it so we have all of our light blocks i have them stacked up here and then i have all of my dark blocks so now i'm just going to start playing so layout one would really just be alternating the a block and the b block so the light and the dark into these kind of circular um, designs. So we always have a light and a dark, light and a dark, and then reverse it when we come to the next one. So that's pretty fun and easy, simple to kind of think about and, and figure out, right? So that's, that's really fun. The second one is we're gonna put that up on the screen. The second layout is really fun. It's easy as well. And it's just a barn, kind of barn raising layout. So we, I usually start in the middle. We start with that same, like we did in the first layout in the middle. And then we, we kind of go out from there. So your dark blocks will kind of alternate on this side, this way and then your lights go in this way. So you kind of get these kind of rows of light and rows of dark. So we will go here and here's dark. 
and here's dark. So you end up getting these rows of dark and rows of light and that'll kind of extend out as you go. Now block th uh, layout three is very unique. I just loved it because it's kind of a layout that you don't see very much. So that it's kind of based on being in rows. So I start kind of the same way as the first one, but I will pair two darks on one side and then two lights on the other. And then we kind of go out from there. So there will be lights here and then it'll be a dark set. And so here would be a light set. So this way it will give this overall look of kind of like things kind of bowing out from the middle. So it gives a little bit of circular motion. And you can see that in the photo here that we'll put up. And then we have layout number four. That is the quilt behind me. And that one is fun because you can kind of build that. If you have fabric that are all kind of in the same color family, like I did mine with that chartreuse, I'm gonna build it sideways so that you can kind of see it better. So we have four darts in the middle. And then we're gonna do the lights. Actually, we're going to turn them so they give kind of this fun effect kind of stretched out this way. So you can see kind of how it stretches out this way and then the, the layout itself will kind of stagger those little balls. So this was kind of this layout was the inspiration behind the name of Lucy because once I saw that it reminded me of diamonds and of course what comes to mind when you're thinking of diamonds Lucy in the sky so that was why she was named Lucy I hope you will try this pattern you'll see how easy it is right it's not as hard as it looks so my name is Gudrun you can find more of my videos here on Fat Quarter Shop or on my own YouTube site which is GE Designs or find my website GEQuiltDesigns.com where you can get links to my Facebook page and group thanks for watching